Hey everybody, I know it looks like I'm digging a shallow grave here, but uh, it actually is going to be an experimental hardwood cutting bed. I just kind of cut into the sod of, I've got some ground ivy um, going on and I just kind of cut, cut out a little chunk and as you can see it's really great crumbly loose soil. And I'm actually going to um, put some perlite, I've got a big bucket of perlite back here and I'm going to mix that in to make it really light and fluffy. Um, and this is going to be used for propagating hardwood cuttings. Okay, so I mixed in my perlite, so we got this real light, fluffy material, which is going to be great for um, the uh, the roots of the cutting. And I guess some people don't even well, just exploded some dirt in my face. Um, some people don't even use the perlite; they just plant directly in the soil. And honestly, the soil is great, um, so it probably wouldn't really be an issue. But I decided to do that. Um, I just filled up like half of this five-gallon bucket with some bulk perlite I bought, and so this will do the trick. And I'm placing this in the shade in my back forest garden here. This is north, um, and we've got some heavy tree canopy. So this will be shaded in the spring and in the summer. Um, so I think that will help the success of the, the cuttings so that they don't get kind of like scalded and overheated by the sun. Okay, so here are the plants that we're going to be using for the experiment. Uh, just a disclaimer here. I don't really have that many of each plant, so if you know they all fail, that doesn't necessarily mean the plant won't work in this method. It's just that you know sometimes propagation is a numbers game, and you have to uh, go ahead and try a large amount of them to get a small percentage of success. So the first one is Nanking cherry. Um, I think this will propagate pretty readily. It's very vigorous, very hardy plant. Still has leaves on it right now, even in uh, middle of November. Uh, Gumi, one of my favorite uh, looking plants. I've never actually tasted the berries, but um, it fixes nitrogen into the soil and it produces really great fruit. Um, and I love the bark and the leaves. It's, it's a really cool plant. So that should propagate well too because I've found that I can propagate that with just like bending a branch down uh, and keeping a brick on it for about a year. I can create a new plant. So that will be fine. This one I only was able to get two cuttings from. Very thin. These might not work. This is a running running service berry so it's a low growing variety it's fairly rare so i'm trying to propagate it but this is all i could get off of it really thin so may not work uh we've got um let's see this would be the white mulberry uh, if you've ever worked with mulberry before again very vigorous won't be an issue i assume if any one of them grows probably this one uh this is a kiwi just like a not a hardy kiwi just a normal uh tropical variety so large fruit kiwi um, which can um, can fruit here in zone 7b but honestly this the cold might be too much for it because i know people who can grow it but it dies back in, to the ground in the winter time so this little um, piece in the ground might freeze and not survive uh, then we've got uh, kind of like a white red mulberry hybrid kind of just like a wild variety that grows well here and then the last one is aronia chokeberry um, and so I've never propagated chokeberry this way before it 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 works well um, propagating by like just mound mound layering or um, by seed so we're gonna see if I can do it by uh, hardwood cutting as well so um, I'm gonna use some uh, rooting hormone even though I may not need to and get these in the ground all right, so this is the first plant I'm going to put into the bed. I've got some Clonax here. I know you're supposed to take it out of the bottle, but um, I'm just going to dip it right in, break the rules. So maybe a little bit deeper. It's got that purple um, on it, and there's Tyrion. Say hi, Tyrion. Hey, Tyrion. <laughs> and uh, we're going to put that right in the ground and cover it up and plant that little guy. I'm going to do that for all these trees um, and start our propagation bed. Okay, they're all done. I um, used the rooting hormone um, on all of these. Uh, I don't know if I needed to use them for some of these plants, like the mulberry or the gumi. Um, and I don't even know if it's the most effective to use um, in the wintertime or if it's better for spring. Um, and this is the, like I said, this is the rooting hormone that I used. And um, probably best practice is to put it in a separate container and you use the amount that you're going to use so that you don't contaminate it but honestly I haven't really experienced disease problems with a lot of my cuttings um, or any of my plants so I'm taking a risk but you know if you're worried about it 
um, don't dip directly into the bottle. <laughs> okay, you can check back um, when look back in the spring and see which ones are budding, which ones are, are rooting, um, and then which ones can be transplanted out. So uh, subscribe if you want to keep updated with the, this experiment.